Today I'm back with another Christmas tutorial. It is November, which means it is officially the Christmas season. Now don't go getting mad at me. We aren't going to completely forget about Thanksgiving, but here at Sewing Parts Online, we love Christmas. I've already put out one tutorial on how to make that adorable stocking, so if you haven't watched that yet, be sure to check it out at the end of this video. Today we are going to be making these adorable lined and unlined bags. Actually, that's opposite. Unlined and lined bags. So let's get started. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So we're gonna start with the unlined option. Cut a rectangle that's five by 12. To keep this bag super simple, it's going to be the fold over type. So it'll be like this. With that being said, you want to select a non-directional fabric. To prevent fraying, on the long edges, you can use either a pinking shear or you can even serge them. If you don't have a serger, you can also use an overcast foot to finish the edges. Here's a contrasting thread color that might be easier to see. If you're not familiar with an overcast foot, I will include a link for that video at the end of this video. So to begin, on each end, mark one quarter inch from the edge, then mark one inch from each edge. Fold at the quarter inch line and press. You can use basting glue to hold it in place. I'm using the seam align glue from the Precision Piecing Products by Acorn. Now fold at the one inch mark and press. Don't glue at this step. It's just giving you a reference point for a future step. Now open it up. Fold the fabric right sides together matching the hem. Make sure the sides are even and then you can pin. I'm using a straight stitch and I'll be using a 2.4 stitch length. We will be sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. So both sides making sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. You just made a basic pouch. Now let's turn it into a drawstring bag. I'm going to go over to my ironing board and press these seams open. Fold back the fabric on the one inch line that you created. Align the seams and straighten it out. It's a good idea to place a couple of pins on each side of the seam so it doesn't shift. Next we are going to edge stitch. What we're doing is just trying to sew really close to this edge. You can use an edge stitch foot or you can eyeball it, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my needle in the center needle position and sew along this edge. When you begin sewing, like I said, remember to back stitch. Make sure that your fabric on the bottom is flat. Sew a couple of inches and then readjust. You always wanna make sure that that top layer of fabric is out of your way. It's totally fine to have to stop and readjust. It's a small little project, so it takes a little bit to get around the whole thing. When you go over the seam, make sure you backstitch. We'll be opening up the channel and we don't want it to rip out. After you've sewn a couple of inches, stop, readjust, and sew a couple more inches. Keep doing this all the way around and then backstitch at the end. Using the seam ripper, pick the stitches to open the channel. Next, we can feed the twill tape. Cut two pieces of quarter inch twill tape about 17 and a half inches long or so. I'm not a fan of these little kinks, so I'm going to go lightly press them. Now we can feed the tape. You can use a bodkin, or if you have a safety pin, that will work too. Since many people don't have a bodkin on hand, I'm going to use a safety pin this go around. Simply pin it on the end. You're going to feed it in one direction all the way around and come out the same side. You just need to push that pin in, squish some fabric onto the pin, then hold the pin and the fabric and pull. Isn't that neat? Once you come up to the seam, it can sometimes get caught because the fabric is folded, but it's pretty easy to work the pin around it. Come on. Here we go. Okay, feeding, feeding. That's how it's supposed to work. Now you can remove your pin. Now let's do the other one. We'll do the exact same thing except start on the other side. Make sure that it's nice and even and tie a knot on each side close to the bag. Next you want to clean up the ends. Just simply clip a little bit off and use a little bit of fray check. That will just stop it from fraying. All done. How cute is that? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. That way you'll get notified of any future video that we have. Next we'll work on the lined medium drawstring bag. 
These directions are going to be the same for the large bag other than a couple of differences that I'll point out. We have our two outer pieces and our two lining pieces. All four pieces are 8 by 10. On one of the short sides, leave that completely open. The three remaining sides go ahead and pin. On the lining fabric, what will be the bottom of your bag, leave about four inches open. This needs to remain open as this is how we turn it right side out later on. Let's work on the outer fabric first. Sew using a quarter inch seam allowance around the three sides. Once again, make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. When you get to the corners, sew up to about a quarter inch from the edge, then leave your needle in, lift up your foot, pivot your fabric 90 degrees, and then lower your foot and keep on sewing. When you get to the end, you know, backstitch. Now you can sew the lining. I find it easiest to start on one side of the opening and then sew all the way up to the top, and then do the same thing for the other side. Next, you can press all your seams open. I find this little seam roll really convenient for that. Now we are going to do what's called boxing the corners. Pinch your corners. Be sure that the seams are lined up. To make sure that it's positioned correctly, you can take a long, fine pin and poke it into the center of your seam and then try to poke right through the back into the middle of the seam. You may have to try it a few times. Once you're centered on both the front and the back, then you can bring your needle up the seam and come back through the same way. If you need to, you can secure it with more pins. This is pretty stable fabric, so I find one pin is plenty. If you have a clear ruler, that is really helpful. You want to place one of the lines from the ruler on the seam and measure one and a half inches from the point, and then draw your line. Here's one of those points where it's a little different for the large bag. Instead of one and a half inches from the point, it would be two inches. Do this on both sides of the lining fabric and the outer fabric. At this point, you can just start sewing. Stitch directly on the line. When you get to the end, stop, lower your needle, lift up your foot. We're going to pivot your fabric all the way until it turns around. And we're going to lower the foot and sew back along the exact same line. And then once you get close to the end, you can backstitch. Trim off the excess, leaving about a quarter of an inch. Leave the lining fabric as is. Turn the outer fabric right side out. Remember, there will be an opening in the lining fabric. Insert the outer piece into the lining. Right sides should be together. Align the side seams and match up the raw edges. Pin at the seams first and then pin the rest of the top. We're going to sew that quarter inch seam allowance. Once again, I'll be using 2.5 stitch length. So you can move forward using the same method that you did with the small bag where you would sew a couple of inches, readjust your fabric, and continue to sew. That is completely fine. Or if you have a removable accessory tray, I would totally do that with the medium bag. It makes it way easier. Unfortunately, the small bag is just too small to use your free arm. This is super handy if you're sewing anything in the round, like our project here. Another great example would be if you were sewing sleeves. If you're unable to remove that accessory tray, just like I said, simply use the same method that we did before. Through the opening of the lining, gently pull the fabric out. Now let's take care of that opening. Fold each side a quarter inch and you can either pin it or you can use that seam align glue. You can hand sew it or you can use your sewing machine to close the lining. Stitch close to the edge, closing that hole. Now you can iron your fabric, specifically focusing on what will be the top area. Now is the fun part. You get to start to see it come together. Push the lining into the outer portion. Make sure that the top is as even as possible. And then you can press for a nice crisp edge. 
I'm going to go take care of that. Straighten the top part of the bag. Using a ruler, mark one and a half inches from the top and two and a half inches from the top. Carefully turn your bag over and mark it the same way on the other side. Bring it to your sewing machine and sew all the way around on both lines. At the seams, back stitch and then continue to sew. It needs some reinforcement since we're going to be picking open some seams. We just don't want that channel to rip. I found that I like the look of going around twice just because it makes it look a little bit thicker. Perfect. Now we've formed our channel. Once again, we're just going to pick out a few stitches, this time making sure to keep it between these two lines. And we'll do that for both sides. For the larger bags, I do like to use the half inch twill tape. So let's measure this out. Once again, I like to leave an extra four inches. So it comes across, fold it back. That's right at the 24 inches. I'm going to show you how to use my little botkin this time because I love this thing. So you just use the little clasp, open it up. It exposes little teeth. Now we'll take our twill tape, put it in there, and close it just like that and that allows you to easily feed it through the channel. And you just open that clasp and release. Now we'll go the opposite direction. Okay, once again, even it out a little bit. the way and then we'll tie our knots again. Clean up your ends and use a little bit of fray check. These are great for secret Santa gifts or leaving little gifts for co-workers but what I think I'm actually going to do is make several of these and fill them with some of my husband's favorite treats and leave them around the house throughout November and December. It's not like he's an adult or anything, right? <laughs> How are you going to use your bags? Comment below. If you're interested in more information on the seam align glue, check out that video. Also, as promised, I've got an overcast video for you. I hope that you enjoyed making these little drawstring bags. They just add a little something to the gift. Until next time, happy sewing everybody!